topics to do that for. Um, and then one of the things they have this reputation course that uh, they're working on and they're pretty close to having done. And uh, she mentioned that TQF is featured in that course. Uh, and uh, I mentioned the tool and she said, oh, that would be really good to update the course to make sure that it includes the tool. So that's the first context. And then the second is that she just said, yeah, it would also be interesting to think about using uh, CAD CAD GPT as a front end for that tool so that mm -hmm. it's easier for people to be able to use it. Mm -hmm. That's the basic, uh, I think that's it. Oh, great. Thanks. Thanks, Gideon. I really appreciate that. Um, there's uh, what I want to do with the TQF tool is finish the math write up. There's basically a math write up, um, but it's it's not complete. I wrote it when I, about halfway through the development process, and I, it could be updated. So um, I think that's one of the final pieces on that project, and I can do a push on that this week. And also, I'll reach out to Angela uh, to meet with her either this this week or next week. And that'll be really cool if it can be included in that reputation course, which I, th I think that should be a really good fit. That's cool. That's that sounds really, really good. Yeah. I like that. Uh, and you know, I, I, now that you're talking about TQF, I'm also thinking that, you know, if, if we think about it, TQF, it's also a central piece of the capital allocation strategy. Uh, so I think it might be important to also, if not have the conversation right now in terms of the direction, and, and you were kind of like referring, I think, yesterday or, or last week to the, you know, what do we do with TQF, the, the purpose of, of the tool? Uh, maybe that that's something that that's probably one of the actionable items that we should probably take for this next sprint, in to try to bring more clarity to the direction and, and to where we want to take this this tool um, as part of the strategy. You know, I think that that'd be interesting to explore. Um, I don't know what you think, Sean. Yeah, I think that's great. So, um, I guess I'm just curious, what, what like when and where can we I think it deserves a good, um, you know, maybe we don't need a whole hour, but maybe like a 30 minute time slot where we're, we're really just brainstorming about TQF and how it fits into strategy um, that could potentially come up in uh, TCAN. Um, is there another, like m maybe the, the TEC team call, but um, I guess I'd like to schedule at some point, like at least 30 minutes. I feel like 30 minutes would be a good chunk to just brainstorm on tqf and how it fits into the strategy and um maybe after like it could be before or after i meet with angela um yeah so just putting that out there of uh what what what's the right venue to have that i i have one suggestion so you know last tuesday we were kind of fishing around for what those alternate weeks are going to look like. This would be, I think, a good topic for next Tuesday. The Great. Next Tuesday call. I love that. I mean, you know, one topic of, and maybe we pick some other ones too. Yeah, and um, I think the topic is TQF in the context of our strategy decision. So um, we could talk about other aspects of, of the strategy decision as well, or if it's really just actually i think tqf does deserve a lot of attention because i mean that came up a lot yesterday in the sprint retrospective is like we need to determine clarity around what we're doing with the t like i we can kind of say like tqf slash tgr um kind of kind of the, they bundle those together and i think yeah that'd be a great topic for next tuesday That sounds perfect. Yeah, I think that's a, a great place to do it. Okay, so I guess we kind of have like our first actionable items uh, of the session. Then I guess maybe we can jump into 
I, I might ask you, Gideon and, and Tom, what do you think is the best process to go about this? Should we kind of like uh, brainstorm a bit on, on, on the things we, we think are important to make actionable of the, based on the, on the strategy? Uh, well, maybe it's not brainstorm. I think there are a lot of things that are probably clear, like the recruiting process, uh, like the budget. But should we kind of like open the floor and go one by one and see if there are things to 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 include for this sprint, or how do you guys see the process? Hmm. This is a really good question, actually. Um, has everyone read this document already? I guess everyone has read it, but I'll drop it also in here just in case. Um, and there, this is not a, there's, I think, more documents that this linked to that have been done in the past that have, um, that have also some, some um, relevance or more context, uh, perhaps. And I would love Gideon's opinion on this too. Perhaps we can highlight I mean, there's so many of us on this call, I'd hate to waste too many people's time going through and highlighting one by one and turning it into an actionable item. But perhaps we can agree upon like of these 2024 goals or the 2024 investments um, and being really specific, which of these are reasonable for us to get started within the next two weeks? You know, making it as simple as possible is probably how I would approach it. And then let the fleshing out of this take its course uh, in this Friday's TCAN and beyond, but at least being ready to pull something from these bullet items here into the sprint. That's how I would probably approach it. Does that make sense to you, Gideon, as well? Or do you have some other ideas on how to do it? Yeah, I, I think that that investment section that you're at, that you're highlighting, seems like a good place to start for sure um and it does seem to me that um you know there are just some natural buckets like you know this one um these are both about capacity so like the hiring process but i think there are some questions up front that we need to decide like well how much are we really going to invest here like what what are the like the what's the money that we're going to allocate of the total money that we have to to doing this kind of hiring. And then I think that there's like other buckets here like this, the reputation work and TQF. Um, and you know, this, this is definitely related to all the stuff you're doing, Nate. Um, so, in, yeah, I could I could even see us kind of like tearing these down into like little mini projects so that we, you know, can kind of like have some ownership around sub projects. I don't know, that that's another way of kind of doing what you're talking about, Tam, is breaking it up into some component pieces. I don't know. And even if we I mean for me what I see as one of our main um difficulties here is really the just ownership of pieces so even if it's sort of you know we will um make investing heavily in marketing comms capacity or investing community organizing engagement but like taking one of these into the sprint and being like here's the person that will own fleshing this out into something even a plan even if there's no plan that goes into the sprint the work is making a plan around that bullet item, if that makes sense. The work is building a plan for, for how to achieve these goals. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And even, I mean, you can, it wouldn't, I don't think it takes that much to kind of go through these things. And I mean, it's interesting, this one here, the target TE route, I think that um, Mark, um, I don't know, is it Mark or Marco? Um, the decentralized Mark. Mark. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, like, you can see kind of buckets where people would naturally be able to plug in. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I think assigning ownership, like self-assigning, like people signing up to the things that they're passionate about, would be that'd be interesting. Can I raise a question that was uh, I also raised on our uh, retro yesterday, but I don't think it was answered. Um, it's really two questions because one is, are we doing another QF round? And two is, how do we make this decision? Uh, is it no, we aren't doing it because we don't have the resources, the coordinator to, to coordinate it? Or is it, yes, we will do it? And so yeah, that was my question. Does anyone have a good reading on uh, future QF rounds? Bear, do you want? I, I, I'm happy to give a quick answer. Barry, you might have more. Um, yeah, when we were, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Uh, no, it's okay. Ian. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Bear and uh, NT and I had a call back in December because we were like, the first thing we need to figure out. Uh, we, we, this is like a transition call that Bear had organized for like how to deal with um, NT moving on and. This was like one of the first topics, and we, the three of us, came to the conclusion. But we haven't, like, you're right, that never kind of surfaced in any subsequent meetings. But we just kind of logic it through, and it was like, given, um, given Enti's departure and just all the uncertainty, like we would have to have started prepping for the round, like already, right now, like. Um, and so I think we decided that it just didn't make sense. We would just stress ourselves out because we don't have anybody here to actually run it um, without him here. And he's, he was pretty clear that he couldn't run it um, given his new job. So, so we just said it probably makes more sense to just, do, just skip this round. It's not going to hurt us in the, in the Gitcoin world. And it would probably hurt us more to do it and do a bad job. So, um, so skip it and just do the next round in May was where we ended up. But... We haven't, like, we haven't, that was just the three of us kind of informally logging, you know, kind of using the logic to check our assumptions, but I think we all need to officially decide. Gideon, I want to chime in um, for a second. I think this is an opportunity. You know what? I like to see opportunities um, in change. And actually, something that happens with Git is that when we run the grants through their platform, they also um, keep, a, keep a percentage, right? But um, we've been in touch with this uh, group called Macy uh, in the Ethereum Colombia community, and they invited us to deploy our own QF. So um, basically, um, this Macy will, can help us to run a QF um, on on our own page, and that way um, we wouldn't have to depend on Gitcoin timing for rounds, and also we could we could have the the full ownership of the QF, and um, and we 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 wouldn't have to pay. Um, for, for for it so um we would need um only some devs actually in in colombia we are going to be running the round um in march and and there are some some guys already doing this and um yeah it would be like a change and a deployment instead of doing it in gitcoin we can have our own qf and that way um even we can test some of the things like the TQF um, without without having to to um, have um, the Gitcoin integration, but but doing it our own page. These Macy um, are the people um, who are also behind the CLR um, fund, and and basically it's like um, yeah an open source tool that we can use to deploy our own QF, not running it on Gitcoin. And that could be a project. I think it's it's interesting. Yeah, I think that's that's interesting, Juanca. Thank you, thank you for sharing it. I think there's definitely like a, an upside and a downside of doing rounds with Gitcoin. Uh, I think there's an option also 
for us to do the the rounds without paying any fees but that um doesn't give us like certain benefits that they provide like civil analysis um some marketing resources but i mean i think it's it's important to do a further analysis what i would just say uh, based on the time that we have is that we we take this topic probably into the next tuesday i think like uh sean framed it tqf and the token engineering grants rounds that can be like a good topic for next tuesday and we can go dive into more detail about this so just for the sake of time time uh based on on, on what Gideon said yeah i think we would probably not be doing any round soon uh especially due to uh due to people no lack of people maybe then the thing that we pull into the sprint is to hire a grants program coordinator and that way we can be ready for the next round. And also this person can perhaps even, it's a super interesting um, project, Juanca, thanks for sharing it. And perhaps this person can even get, uh, you know, their, their feet wet understanding the different platforms that are available, including this one. But maybe that's something is like job description and starting interviewing for a grants program coordinator. This is, would be one way to sort of take this bullet item targeting te rounds to projects within the OK suit and like to get this some momentum behind this that's an idea uh, absolutely yeah no and, and and i i've already kind of like signed up for that um actually the the idea to go through the recruiting process was to start it like in january like at the beginning of the year but as we went through all this strategy process that kind of like got uh, paused for some time um, but i think now it's the moment just to to regain momentum on that and you know the way i see it is is just not for i think we need to definitely hire someone for the grants program uh, uh, coordinator but there's also a need for a, a team coordinator there's also a need for the marketing lead um, there there are I, there are a couple of roles that we that we probably need to to hire someone to take on, right? So I'm I'm fully committed to signing up on this task of going through this process, and uh, of course, probably we'll we'll do this collectively. But what I'm saying is that I I'm willing to own own this this part. Awesome, that's great, that's great. Um, I am just dropping in our notes the kind of roles that we need. You know, I know that I see some some immediate needs, but like, what are the other? What would the, what was the last one that you said? Grants program coordinator, team coordinator, and what was the last one? It was sort of marketing coordinator, marketing person. Marketing, yeah, marketing lead. Marketing uh, lead. We also uh, previously had uh, the plan to have a fundraising lead, but depending on the strategy and if we decide to focus more on optimism, we might not need much capacity mm -hmm. in actual grant writing. But there's this other need of maybe having a I'm starting to call it uh, maybe as an ecosystem lead, someone can that can be this bridge between the TEC and other communities like Optimism, especially and, and Gitcoin probably, uh, that can be like really on the know of of what's happening and you know like the the mission request and the different opportunities that mm -hmm. might arise uh, that we can have someone dedicated to to that. So that probably be another role. And the last one that we also had in mind um, was maybe having some small capacity in regards to uh, to media production, so working together with the marketing lead and with the events lead, with Nate, in, in doing some production for the events or for any content that we might have. This might be probably not a full-time role or it might require like less hours, but those are all the roles that um, I was thinking and, and that we've been discussing so far. Cool. So this looks like we have a, a very clear scope then for this sprint um, in terms of, and I, it, I mean, you own it, so we leave it to you to sort of prioritize this to using advice process, but like maybe by the end of the sprint, we could have a role description that we could share for one or two or however many you think is necessary of these roles or like, you know, urgent, on fire, burning, critical versus would be nice to have later. And thanks, Bear. That's so. Yeah. That's very, very clear. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, and the other thing, uh, I guess, that is is related with this that Gideon was also mentioning before, 
it's in regards to numbers and, and the actual budget that we have uh, to be able to, to cover for these roles. So this is work that I've already been doing as part of the strategy process going through that budget. Uh, and I think it, now it might be a good opportunity to even dive more deep and go into more detail. I mean, I think it's pretty pretty decent already, but I think there might be also room for improvement. So that's another thing that I would like to continue taking on and, and owning uh, in regards to to those numbers. Um, that on one side are like numbers for the team, for the coordination team. And then on the other side, we have this question of the broader budget for the TEC that that we've also been talking about that's another thing that i'm i'm still willing to to take on so yeah just just um, stating that i think that's really important i mean in in many ways um the assumptions behind who we're hiring um are going to be at least in this first year is going to be like a big driver in that budgeting so i think that's there's nice synergy there too i'll throw out one other bucket um and uh sean i think this one involves you um very much uh it's this um it's related to well actually let me step back I think that there are a few things that where there's a lot of synergy and potential overlap, and I think it's worth us trying to tease out how these things connect to each other. So um, one of them is TQF and the role it plays in the grants program. So that's um, that's kind of one vector for TQF. The other vector um, for TQF is around reputation. And uh, it was actually Griff who had that insight uh, several months ago. You know, when he looked at um, TQF just, you know, very quickly, his first thought was, wow, this could be an interesting front end for reputation, like basically compiling, um, you know, helping a community decide how to put together the various factors that go into deciding reputation. And um, I actually think that that's really true. And in fact, in a way, that is kind of what we're using TQF for um, is um, even right now um, is like, how, how do we weight people, which is an, kind of another way. It's, it's a somewhat related task to assigning the weight on uh, the voting is, you know, it's kind of the reputation that they have based on um, their expertise from the uh, academy and then their their uh, share their tokens. So I think that there's another kind of vector right there around reputation. And um, you know, Tam, I don't know how interested you still are in the reputation thing, but um, I'm interested in that. I would be happy to brainstorm with you, Sean, on on that. Um, in addition to the next week's call i think there's something there yeah totally gideon i'm i'm happy to discuss that because we do have that in tqf we have a we, it's basically a tunable formula that combines tec token holdings and academy badge holdings it combines those two signals and creates what would be basically a reputation score so that's some pretty cool tech that we do have uh now and i think we can go deeper into that and then we can think about <clears throat> like there's individuals and there's projects and i think um tqf and the grant rounds kind of iteratively tunes both of those things the the more reputation an individual has the more they influence basically the reputation score of a project which is kind of what the the quadratic funding outcome the tegr outcome is it's like a reputation distribution of projects because it's signaling what should get funded and I, I was totally yeah just before your comment came in about praise i was thinking the same thing i think those are really cool signals uh that can all be combined and like angela was mentioning cad cad gpt i think praise is a gold mine for 
some GPT interaction because we have a text, we have text with every piece of praise. And so that is this this massive text-based data set that is indicating, is signaling what our community values. So yeah, I think there's just like so much potential uh, laying below that surface. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. And and I think we've we've done a lot of the hard work. Like I think uh, t like operating these grant rounds through 2023, and then putting the whole TQF app together. I think that we've and and like praise has been operational for years now. It feels like we've done a, almost all the hard work, and uh, and it, we're kind of in a position of like um, getting the fruits of that. I think we just have to put these things together, put the narrative together, and then keep going with a little bit of deeper um like implementation of how these things are combined and communicated and there's a lot of value to be like squeezed out of that so i think we're in a good position i guess the other thing i would just throw out is um one of the things that bear has in the budget is special projects and reputation is one of them and it may be the kind of thing that we could go um pitch that um you know, much like the migration, the OP migration, you know, pitch that as uh, a proactive, not a retroactive. Uh, I mean, we could do it as retroactive. We could have, we could pay for it from the common pool. But, um, you know, just thinking, and Tam, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I know it's um, the TQF angle. I'm not sure if that's something you're, you've you thought about, but tying it into Sam and the work he's done already for the reputation, like the hook, um for the reputation token well from a technical standpoint the um re it's pos there's a reputation dao a tec reputation dao rtec and there's a token that's able um the dao would have to vote to to start minting it but in theory uh the tec is technically capable of launching a reputation token following the migration to optimism that was a piece of the development work that was added to the scope. Uh, so the question around reputation would really be more of a modeling question. Uh, the technical feasibility exists. It's more a matter of how would we model the, uh, so allocate and distribute reputation, how would we, uh, how would it affect our governing governance systems? Um, that would be the re the real question. So we have two uh, two DAO votes, one for allocation allocating funding and one for system uh, system changes or DAO changes. And so these are each um, currently weighted at you know fifty fifty percent, but one of them doesn't exist we would have to also decide how to tune those parameters. Um, so what weight to give reputation versus... Uh, so it, it's, um, it's something that is feasible. I think the question is how, how to who, what allocations, and then how to fine tune our voting systems. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it does sound a lot like a modeling challenge, like a, a and that's what that's what's so interesting about the tool that Sean has is that we could try out different weightings um, for the reputation components, but then also I think Sean, I don't know, could we? Uh, that's the interesting thing that what Tam is bringing up is like the weighting between the reputation token and the actual token, the current token in terms of impact on on votes and things like that yeah that's basically built into tqf right now you can load up any token distribution and uh then tune the weights of the different tokens uh, to output like one final signal so yeah and we could start modeling that i mean before it exists we could create a like a simulation 
So we could say, you know, what if this was the reputation distribution and we could see what that, yeah, we could, we could start to basically simulate it and get some insights and it's like, it's ready to go. It's just, you know, two lines of code to like one line to plug in a distribution and then you just tune the parameters and you can play with it from there. I think the more the bigger challenge is really you know, because it's a, a very much a social issue is who uh, has reputation and how much reputation do they have? That's that's more of a cultural, you know, I feel like the technical element is easy. The modeling is not necessarily easy, but, you know, YGG has already lifted that heavy, has already, you know, weighted, lifted that weight. It's more of uh, culturally who should get how much reputation in the TEC, and then what does it mean to have reputation? What can you do with your reputation in the TEC? So for me, it's more of a cultural question. And yeah. maybe slightly political. Yeah, I agree. I guess the thing that would just be, what would be interesting, I think over the course of this year is, um, in a way, it's like parameterizing reputation, mm -hmm. and um, and then you know taking the parameters. You know, so I'm just making this up right now, but let's say that praise is part of it, and um, the NFT. You know, the the uh, the academy's accreditation is part of it. Um, let's just say for right now that those are two things, right? That we know are are in there. I'm sure there's others, but like breaking that out and saying these are here's the logic behind it and then um running some simulations and then spitting out the data and then putting it up on the forum right and basically sharing with the community like this is the research this is what we found um and and turning it almost into like a param like some modified version of the param parties where you know people are getting to i mean we're really simulating it Right, and getting discussions going around what should be the components of reputation, and you know what what the implications are. I don't know if we could do it, but I think it would be that would be a nice way to do it. If we have some ideas on that, um, where, where where can I put those ideas? Do you have like an active doc? Uh, yeah, there is. Um, I think I have a few. So I'll consolidate those like today and get one one doc. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link and I'll post a general link where people can provide ideas. It sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm thinking that, you know, bringing this conversation back into the planning. I think that's a good actionable item uh, that you, Sean, can own to just try to have one document where we can all start sharing ideas and brainstorming. I think that's a good uh, good first step. Um, and just in relation with this, with the, with the reputation conversation, Tam, I just have a question. You know, in, in regards to this more technical part, um, you say like Sam already did, a bunch of work on that but is there still something else missing besides the actual boats and what i mean more is like in terms of resources do you think like to go about this project would cost uh some resources to the tc uh, what was the last sentence would cost some resources? some resources yeah some funds well the there is definitely some work to do around deciding who are the people who would be on the airdrop list for reputation and then some coordination and community engagement around, you know, allocations or there's that, I, I'd say there's something like um, a analysis slash like engagement work that has to be done. Uh, Sam has one outstanding item, a technical outstanding item to do that he was finishing. Uh, it might be finished this week, but it is just, um, it's almost not even worth going into, but it me it's essentially so that you we can fine tune those weights 
um, as a percentage of the total supply so that you could, you could, um, um, you could have more, uh, what is the right way to describe this? You could have a better uh, weighted distribution between the two tokens when, when you vote. Um, and, but that should, that should be done. That was part of the original scope for this. It's just a piece that hadn't been done before the end of last year. Uh, so there wouldn't be, um, there shouldn't be any more technical development. We may want some technical support through it, but the development piece should have been all done or would have all been all done once this last component is finished. I mean, it would still work. We just wouldn't like the way that it works because it would be 50-50 and we would want to be able to um, have it be more of a percentage of the total supply. Um, I, I really think the work is more TEC work. It is sort of analysis and modeling, you know, and really decide, like the getting community vote to vote on what has to, what the allocation is and to approve it. And then uh, the DAO, the reputation board would get set up. So we would need a reputation board. And then the reputation board would uh, start minting reputation tokens. That's how that would play out. And also determining is praise the mechanism that we use for allocating uh, reputation or do we, you know, there, this is sort of like wide open. Do we have our, the projects that receive funding from the TEC, do they also earn reputation for, you know, having, having participated, like made it into the rounds and, you know, what different ways can the TEC distribute reputation is also another uh, path to, to go down to consider. But I'd also say that uh, if, if there's any proposed utility outside of, uh, you know, voting power within the TEC, uh, that we, we kind of take that into consideration as well. And if other TE firms are willing to to recognize this reputation for any other purpose outside of, you know, just voting. Yeah, so it's those kinds of questions to to answer and then to propose a solution for. Perfect. Yeah, that's that's good to know, Tam. Thank you for, for the clarification. Yeah, so it sounds like it's more TEC work or of us coordinating and and going through this type of more social, political type of decisions. Um, okay, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's a good first step to, to start putting together our, our ideas in, in that document, Sean, and we can go from there. Uh, so we have just about two minutes. I do want to say that one person to talk to with somebody who's been working in and has worked with us in the past is Marathon Mind, uh, who has been actively working on reputation stuff in the space uh, and continues to do so now. So uh, he might be somebody that's good to talk to if we're looking to hire for a particular position around reputation or to seek somebody to kind of spearhead that. He'd be a good person to talk to. Can I throw out one more thing before we get into the sprint part? Um, I think that another big chunk of work um, is going to be how we uh, integrate in with the OP ecosystem over this next year um, so that we're not just receiving um, retroactive public goods funding, but we're actually contributing to their, to their ecosystem. And... Um, <laughs> Damn, <laughs> you're gonna break Discord. Um, so uh, yeah, but I think this is really important. I think part of it is this, like, a, what I've been thinking of as like a community organizer type. Like Octant right now is a clear example of how we're just like not plugged into Octant, and we we don't know what buttons to push or anything, right? And we definitely don't want to be in that position with Optimism. So we definitely want somebody who can do that kind of stuff. But in addition. I think that um, there's a real opportunity for us to help shape um, some of the narrative. I mean, I know this is this almost sounds a little bit arrogant or presumptuous, but I think we can actually help uh, optimism kind of with their narrative by embedding token engineering into that. 
And uh, I think that there may be some roles that we can play in helping them to allocate or like identify projects that could benefit from benefit from token engineering. And that's why um, I think that uh, the uh, decentralized SDGs, um, the, the 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 thing about the bounties, um, is is so interesting. Like it's figuring out how we can serve as a regranting or maybe bounty distribution um, role that basically brings token engineering expertise into um, the optimism ecosystem and, and helps them to bolster some of their dev work. It's, it's a little bit presumptuous. I think we have to be careful not to like overstate our capacity here, but I think that this is the path to, like, to really generating some value for optimism and also in the next year or so, being able to be recognized for that. So I think that's a project. I think there's a project there. I think working with Mark on that, he seems to be pretty excited. And it feels like there's a kind of like a cluster of stuff there that relates to the grants program, but it's a little bit different from the grants program. That's one cluster. And then the other cluster, I'm sorry if I'm, I'm taking up too much space right here, but I think the other cluster is, um, I think it's really interesting that Phil and Griff got so lit up by this um, audit, the token engineering audit uh, opportunity. And even though I think it's, it's really important for us to stay focused on just building generic capacity for TEC over this next year and get funding in, I think that what this is saying is, hey, you know, this is a commons and it will the way I keep thinking about Phil and the way he plugs in is like, we, over the long haul, we need to turn this back into a platform, an economic platform where people who are excited about things that directly contribute to token engineering can build on that. And if they have a passion and excitement, they can pitch to the community. And if the community responds well, they can launch a project like the token engineering um, audit marketplace, you know? So I think that's the other thing over this next year is like figuring out, uh, you know, like this is, I think the closest thing that we have to the actual incubator is a test case. If Phil continues to be interested in this um, for um, making space, like giving up a, a runway for interesting projects, projects like that to take off and not have it be run by like the coordination team or anything like that. It's like, it's an opportunity, you know, we support it but it, it's like giving space. What does it look like to give space to community members who want to build on the commons and, and create an opportunity? So I, that's the way that I've been sorting that out in my head. And I would be, if people are interested in jamming on that or thinking about that, I, I, I would be up for um, helping on that front. Yeah, I really think about it that way too. You know, I know it's difficult for a lot of people to plug into the TEC and figure out how to get started doing something, but this principle of duocracy, I think is part of our DNA. And it's, um, at least the way I see it is if somebody comes and is very excited about something, Phil with the TE audit, um, Mark with the idea of, of the bounty platform, it's sort of to facilitate and get out of their way, you know, like just to help them if however we can without necessarily turning it into a large project that consumes a lot of TEC resources. It's sort of like to, to as you said, create space for that. There, we are four minutes past five o'clock. Um, is it okay to wrap this up and to switch to the sprint planning? Absolutely. Um, yeah. Let's I, let's do it. I would like to make a small parenthesis. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, that um, on the topic of the agenda of the call was the recruiting process, and we didn't um, go over it. But I I left my my comments um, in the document, and I also want to speak um, about them. And is that um, first of all. Um, I see that, that there is a Google form for this, and I don't know 
it would be cool if we can make it like in the forum so it's more transparent we and that everyone can know the people that applied and not only the people that has access to the forum and the other thing that i wanted to mention is that i think that the vote should be open to the community because it feels strange that the coordination team has um vote on electing the coordination team and i expressed the same concerns in 2022 um when the coordination team um, um, was born um, because it was like um, with a, um, without an, an open process for this and like the people um, uh, that was participating in the initiative had a lot of influence on, 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 on who were um, the ones that were going to be in the coordination team. So I think it would be good to open the space for people and to make a boat around this. Um, we've uh, been um, speaking about that we need different boats and why not start engaging the community again and also like make this something more participatory um, in the election process. Um, yeah, I think it would be good to decentralize and this, see this as, as an opportunity to promote engagement um, from the community for this and for further votings. Um, yeah, I, I think I, I think this is something that I've been expressing for a long time and I don't want to have that feeling of like uh, um, like saying and repeating something that is not like well received, so I, I propose to really lower the waterline here and, and bring some of these things to the conscious. And if my message is not well received, try to at least process through the noise and see what, what am I trying to signal here. Um, like in, 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 in that moment, the people that, that participated in the team um, was people that was participating in the in the working groups that led the initiative, and like at that moment, that that was the thing. But but if we are tr tr trying to in to engage the community again, why not like also um, promote a more transparent and decentralized process um, for this coordination team? Can I jump I, I in, uh, Juanca? Sorry, yes. go ahead, finish, finish your thought. I am cognizant that we are almost 10 minutes into sprint planning, but I'd like you to finish your thought. I mean, I'd like you to have the space to finish your thought too. Yes, I, I, it's also something that, that, that has like put me like sad with my participation in the TC because I feel that m what I am trying to, to raise is like not welcome. And like when, when I speak, it's like, okay, what, when, um, like, like if, if, like if it would be better that I didn't say what I am saying and and it's like suppressing the no voice and and if we are going to engage in a in a moment of of political activity that we are talking about with all the reputation talking and stuff like that i I think it would be also good to to somehow um make more participatory this this um election process i mean i I don't even want to participate. But I think, for example, that that and 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 this is something that that um, I was worried about on on the first coordination team, and is that people that don't get TEC then um, are the ones coordinating, and and then um, as as they don't have investment in the token, they can go out really easily, and they don't feel like the same stake that people um, that has to see um, feel and like the skin in the game, like people can just receive rewards from the coordination team and, 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 and don't be affected if the community um, or if the token price goes, goes down because they are secure with that, like as a job, but not like as an um, staking of the token. 
There's a lot to unpack here, Hwanga. <laughs> First, let me say, because I, and I'm going to try to keep this brief. I do really appreciate, I personally, okay, I'm speaking for myself. I, I personally do appreciate that you uh, show up and you have your opinion and you share your opinion. Um, I disagree with that last statement that only, you know, if you say it another way, it comes across as something like only people who have TEC and hold TEC should work for TEC. And that, of course, I think we if, we, if we rephrase that, I think we can see that that would be something most people would not agree with. Uh, and I wouldn't call somebody's compensation a reward. They are doing work and they're compensated for the work that they're doing. It's not as if the coordination team is just being rewarded for no effort. And then for the recruiting process, I, really like the idea of this, and I don't think it was ever meant not to be transparent um, of their, Bear could speak more to this, but certainly of there being a role, a, like a job description and the job description being posted and people applying for the job description. The one place where I would divert from the perspective that you're sharing is um, in a team, team dynamics really matter. And I also think for the team, uh, the team knows best what needs they have. It feels as if it is a recipe for disaster for a community who's not necessarily in the day-to-day -day of what is needed in a team to vote a person into a team. Uh, that, that, that's different. That I think, you know, TCAN was sort of voted in, not sort of the... The guardians were voted in by the community. The, that is that is more uh, a service role, a civil servant to the TEC, and that makes sense to actually vote for somebody. But I think to for the TEC to hire someone that will be compensated by TEC funding, it really makes sense for the person, the people who are closest to that work to decide the, the person that will work with them. I mean, you could imagine how nonsensical it would be if I were as an OP token holder to vote for the person that should be hired for a particular open role in the OP foundation without knowing what the rest of the team is, who the rest of the team is, what they do, what the job role it really entails, the intricacies of what it means to work inside the OP foundation. It really makes sense for the people that will, that the team that's going to be hiring that person to decide the person they hire. So that that's maybe my, my pushback on this idea of the community voting for a, a coordination team member. I Thank you, Tam. I, I really thank you for, for listening and for engaging in this conversation. I have some replies, but I, I want to also listen fully to the feedback and also like make a small dialogue. Sorry if I am crashing a little bit the, the sprint planning, but it's also something that I've been like trying to talk about for, for some time and it's something that really drives me and, and inspires me and that I want to contribute to. Can I just add one quick um, response to because, um, but I I also appreciate um, like you know that you're the only one like if there are other people who share these same concerns, nobody's coming forward and and stating them. And I think it's um, just an ongoing act of courage and love that is coming from you that you continue to do this. Um, so that's the first thing I want to say. Um, and then the second thing is that um, I, I really, what Tam is saying really resonates with me. It's, it's almost like, imagine like people from, you know, the community telling Gravity, you know, telling you who you should hire for the Gravity team. Maybe you're, you would be open to that, um, but it does change some of the dynamics of a, of a small working team. And I think more pragmatically though, um, you know, in the past, we've just kind of like, as, as, as the TEC, we've just kind of held the doors open and anybody who showed up and they kept coming back long enough, they kind of joined the team, right? They joined, they joined a working group. And that's kind of what happened with the formation of the coordination team. It was like most, like most of the community kind of went away. Um, and the people who, you know, there was like a small core of people who ended up staying and that was what the, the origins of the coordination team were. Um, but I think that what we're trying to do now is change that dynamic. 
and really go out and open it up to an actual recruiting process with interviews and with, you know, like really trying to make sure that the people we bring in are the very best. So the thing that I just worry about when I hear what you're describing is um, I don't know how we'd run an open, like a, a, an interview process where the whole community was involved in um, participating in that. And I think the other concern that I have is this turning into more of like a popularity contest um, than actually tuning to the specific needs of the team uh, and what, what needs to happen. Um, now, having said all that, I still think that there are ways that we can get at some of the um, what you're hoping to get at here because I think um, as a principle, it's a really good principle. So I think it's like, um, what are the ways that, you know, anybody can participate in sharing these job positions with people they know? Um, you know, what are, like, how do we do this in a way that we get the best of opening it up without the um, encumbrance, you know, without the kind of the negative sides of it, of like becoming too bureaucratic or running what could devolve into a popularity contest? Um, so that, I think, so that's the part that I, I definitely take to heart, and I will be thinking about that, um, in, you know, over the next few weeks as we think about this. Thank you, thank you, thank you for trying to incorporate um, and see uh, um, like a little bit of the light that I want to to bring to the space, and. Um, for sure. I mean, uh, I am not saying that what I am saying has to be done. I am just trying to add some ingredients to the decision-making process. And um, re re the, the, I have some, some comments. Um, for example, um, I think that um, it should be also stated, like, which members or of the coordination team will continue because if if you exp say like a team recruiting process maybe we are thinking that the whole team even for example Gideon and Nate and Bear have to apply again if they want to be reelected or if there is going to be some continuity on the members of the team and and you are just looking for additional people um, because that, for for me, it, like we can we can do both things. Like we can say, hey, um, the members of the coordination team that are going to stay are X, Y, Z, and then um, all the other new people has to apply, or we are going to um, make this uh, selection process for the whole team, and like even the people that is right now inside. Um, have to, has has to apply again. So that's why if if we are in the second scenario where all the people has to apply again, um, I see it can be more chaotic and also um, that um, it can happen. What what Tam is saying that that um, it it turns like into a popularity contest, but um, then. At least it should be stated that there are some people that will not be touched, or some people that will be already in the team. And 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 like if if all the team is getting elected again, it wouldn't make sense for some of the members of the team to have voting process on this, to have voting on this. But if there are some people that will stay in the team, then these people that stay in the team can have vote and like wait on the decision making process. I don't know if I'm being clear, but but. I, I think I, I kind of expressed what, what I tried to say. It's like, um, if, you're, if, if everyone's going to participate, then the people that will participate cannot have um, voting or, or like decision um, weight. And if the, the people that is not participating, that's the people that can have like a, a voting on this. Bear, do you want to share anything on this? Since I want to open space for you, since you were the one who put the this first draft of the doc together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
I think it was it was a lot, but just like uh, Tam um, and Gideon Juanca, I also appreciate that you take the time and 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 the the effort to to provide your your feedback and and your thoughts and because this really shows that that you care about the the TC and the community and I think that's probably one of the things that we need the most more people that care about the TEC and that are here for the for the right reasons no that, that we really want to 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 put our um how you say in english our our grain of sand nuestro grano de arena no to to contribute to the to the community so i, I really appreciate that uh, i think it's really important all the points that you're sharing i fully support this idea of transparency full transparency i've always supported that i think it's really important to um clarify that and state that once we uh, start going through the process publicly uh, right now this is just kind of like a, an initial set of ideas right the, the 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 whole plan is to go through advice process uh, with a team uh, with a team and then start opening up with a uh, with a community uh, and of course with like i was telling you with transparency as uh, one of the main uh, principles of of that process uh in regards to voting uh, i mean i don't see this as an election uh i see this just as a straightforward hiring process for a, a team you know uh, like like it was mentioned before uh i think we've as a team we've become better at uh identifying the needs that we have and we've also become better at kind of like uh identifying the types of um people that we need the type of skills the type of commitments uh, uh to have in the team so i think all of that uh, really serves as as good context for us to be able to decide which which person might be good a good fit for a specific role uh, you know just like in, a, in in any in any organization um i i do see that difference like tam was saying between for example electing guardians i do see that as an election that the community needs to have a, a saying uh, but then when you talk about the team i i do think that it's really important to take their um their opinions into account you know and uh, that's why you know at the same time it's it's still not fully um defined you know that's why i was raising there in the in the in the document the question of well, who should be voting, you know, or who should we deciding? Just the team? Should we include the TCAN? And I mean, it's, of course, super welcome that you include this other idea of opening up that voting process also to the community. So, again, I, I thank you for that. And um, I, this will be a topic that we'll continue talking in the in the following weeks. So if, if this is something that you that you care, that you're passionate about, I mean, I'd be more than more than happy to continue having you here and, and hearing your thoughts and we can all work together in, in in putting together this process. Thank you. Thank you for, for the kind words. I will be um, participating in the process without any like personal motivation. I don't even want to participate. Um, I just feel like um, the process is important. And um yeah the other thing i wanted to mention is uh that what we can do also is to make really good job descriptions or really good role descriptions even for all the roles and even the people who is who is doing the role right now can like reapply and okay. um uh, into that role. But, but yeah i i i don't yeah. want to like say anything <laughs> and Sorry, Tam, and sorry, no, everyone. No, it's okay. Look, the, Juanca, you, you brought up something really important, and it was really actually useful of this time for us to dig into this and to challenge perceptions and ideas, and I really appreciate it. And I really appreciate that you instigated this. So really thanks to you, but now I'm going to steal the time back. We have 35 minutes to do sprint planning. Anyone who's more who's interested in talking more about the recruiting process, please drop your issues. I mean, your your notes here in this document. I can see a, a lot of us have already jumped in, and then uh, we have our trust in Bear to no. <laughs> okay, we love you. I love you too, Anka. <laughs> um, and then we could um, 
Yes, then we can trust Bear to consolidate all of the information and uh, update the process, and we move forward from there. Cool. So I'm going to.